we're going to write a story in class today. OK, we're going to write a 250, approximate, approximately 250 word piece of flash fiction. And the reason I'm having you do this is that, again, once you understand how this works, you can unpack it. But I often find that the easiest way to understand something is to just put it into effect. So the opening. The opening is where we meet our character and make promises for our readers. So I'm going to talk about the things that you need to establish, but the order in which you need to establish it is up to you. The key here is that your reader wants to be oriented. So in your first three sentences, who, where, genre. That's it. Who, where, and genre. Now, there's a bunch of different types of opening. I will be clear that the type that we're doing right now is something that's called an action-driven opening. Now, before you start, let me, let me give you just a little bit more to help you out. So I said that you need to establish where. Okay? This is your location. Your reader wants to be grounded about where they are. So for the location, I want you to link to a sensory detail. So rather than she stood in the battleship's engine room, which does tell me the location, you're going for something more like the thrum of the battleship's engines resonated through her feet. Does that make sense? So for your location, I want a sensory detail. For your character, for your character, you're going to be wanting to use point of view. Uh, the how the character sees and interacts with the world. One of the easy things you can do kind of in your own brain is to define a shorthand for the character. So it could be something like um, <coughs> sexist boss, uh, spunky pirate, uh, angsty teenage jockey. So, but but something that gives you an idea of what their attitude is. That's the thing, that's the piece you're looking for. So the way you're going to explain that to me with the who is that you're going to give me their action. What are they doing? What is the thing that they're doing? What is the action that they're taking? Does that make sense? Um, and then the genre, you want to get in a genre-specific detail as fast as you can. So this is going to be something specific and unique. So thrum of battleships engines. Sounds specific, not unique. If I said the thrum of the battleships warp core drive, that gives you a much more specific thing. The thrum of the battleship's steam engine through its ironclad walls gives you a different, specific, unique detail. Does that make sense? OK. So you have three sentences to do this. Bonus points if you can do it in one. And this does not mean long sentences. <laughs> this means specific sentences. Okay, so you have three minutes. That's a minute per sentence, which is a luxury. So in three sentences, you shouldn't have had room to get into trouble yet. With this other thing that happens with short stories, which is that you try to put too much in. So for our purposes, you are going to be allowed two characters and one location. No more than two characters. So for ours, because we're going to try to keep it to 250 words, you have a maximum of two characters and one location. So try to keep it short. Your next sentence is going to be about, uh, we're going to introduce our conflict. So conflicts are all about your character trying to achieve a goal and failing to achieve the goal. This is why it's called a try-fail cycle. Try, fail. 
So in a short story, and, and sometimes a novel too, I would normally ask you to, d uh, to develop a, uh, to give me that, that first conflict within the first 13 lines. But in a piece of flash fiction, for our purposes of this exercise, you get two sentences, and those are your next two sentences. So your next two sentences are, what is your character trying to do? And then, uh, what is, uh, sorry, what is your character trying to do and why? That's the setup of your, your try-fail cycle. That's the thing they are trying to do. And then, once we know what they're trying to do, what is stopping them? What is stopping them? Now, for flash fiction, one of the tricks that you can do is to have several of the try-fail cycles be implied as happening before the scene starts. So you are, again, you've got, you're going to write me two sentences. What is she t your character trying to do and why? What is the barrier? What is stopping them from doing that thing? All right? Once again, two sentences. A minute per sentence. You, you can do it. Now we're going to start throwing conflicts at them. Here's the trick. When something fails, they try a different approach. That's what the try-fail cycle <coughs> is. And again, your job as the author is to knock the character down and pick them up again. Um, and I'll just note that asking a question and getting snubbed, it doesn't have to be a big try-fail cycle. Just an asking and getting snubbed is a try-fail cycle. So each action that your character takes should have a consequence. And we usually describe this as yes, but, no, and. So yes, but means that they made progress towards their goal, but they were pushed back from it. No and oops, means they did not make progress towards their goal, and they were pushed farther back from it. So what you're going to be looking for here is a try-fail cycle for your character. And you, you know, try to just give them one where they try something and it fails and things are a little bit worse. You can have it succeed and things still get worse, but try for a failure, a straight up failure, and, and things get worse. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, for this one, oh, I'm giving you five whole sentences <laughs> and five minutes. So you understand also proportionally what has happened to your story is that the beginning is at this point about the first third. You've got your setup right there proportionally. And then we've spent more words on that try-fail cycle than we did on the setup. Does that make sense? You can see the proportions starting to take place there. So now, now we start into the end of the middle. Um, so the try-fail cycle is the middle. The end of the middle is where we're coming out of this. Uh, it's about the two-third or three-quarter mark in most things. You, you ask questions, you open up problems, you make things worse. And then you start to resolve them. You start to close those story questions. This is why you always bog down, by the way, uh, at the two-third, three-quarter mark, because you're changing mode. But most of it is that you're changing mode from starting things to ending things. So how do you do that? The conflicts, yes, but, no, and. The resolutions are faint, yes, and. Because that's a movement towards the goal and a continuation towards the goal. And represents continuing in the uh, same direction in many ways. No but. That means that there's been a reversal that they didn't think, but they still get something towards the goal. So you're going to switch to closing mode. This means that the next try-fail cycle that your character does is going to be a try-succeed. Whatever it is that they do is going to solve the problem. All right? Now, in a story or a novel that's m more than 250-ish words, 
you would do multiples of those iterations, getting them closer to the goal each time. You would iterate it. In our case, because we're doing a piece of flash fiction, we're going to solve the problem right now. Does that make sense? And again, you get about five sentences to solve this sucker. Okay? If you can do it in less, that's great. So I'm giving you another five minutes. So now we have to end it. Because that's not an ending, right? It's the problem is solved, but it's not satisfying yet. You're mirroring the ending, which also means that you're going to mirror those, if you think about it as mirroring those last three sentences, that you actually need the same things. We need to know who, where, and genre or mood. Things have shifted over the course of the story. So you want to ground the reader by making sure that they understand what has shifted, that you kind of draw a line under it. So hitting those points again will help us see the change. For the who, you're going to again use an action or reflection, the character actively thinking about something specific. For the where, often a sensory detail. And again, if you look at the beginning, sometimes pulling a sensory detail from there is useful. And genre, something specific. This is, in this case, when I say genre, I'm really thinking more about the mood because often the tone has changed. Like if the character starts in a very happy place and you're writing a tragedy and it ends in a tragic place, which is why it's called a tragedy, <laughs> uh, you would want the mood to be different at the end than it is at the beginning. And so you want to express that with the words and the language structure that you use. So you've got three sentences to wrap that up. Make sure that I know where my character is now emotionally. If they have changed place, if you're in a milieu, make sure that I know where that new place is. Give me a little bit of mood and, and that genre specific detail, the, 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 the thing that makes it feel specific to the story. Three sentences, three minutes. All right. So the, the rules that I was giving you about three sentences, five sentences, those are rules of thumb. It's, it, that's a, a, an easy goal for you to hit. In the real world, it's going to be more flexible than that. Uh, but it's something that's achievable. <laughs> but can you, you can see how you can, you can take the, te the, the principles from doing this exercise and apply them at a longer length. The, the, the proportional idea of what these stories look like, what each of those pieces are doing. You can probably see how if you put another piece of uh, mice element in there, that you would then have to establish two problems at the beginning rather than just one. Or you'd establish one problem, and then a little bit later you'd introduce the other one. And that that's, again, going to make the story proportionally longer when you do that. Good job, guys. I expect you all to sell flash fiction pieces now. <laughs>